Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. This interview is taking place in a cafe right by Notre Dame in Paris. Um, I'm here for a nice cultural visit, which included a couple of theatre trips, one of which was to Théâtre Ranala, where I was lucky enough to see a version of Cyrano de Bergerac with English surtitles, and it's those surtitles that have led to this interview with Amanda Matala from Theatre in Paris. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. You clearly are American from the accent there. Do you want to tell us a little about Theatre in Paris? It's a fascinating venture. When I looked on Google, I searched for Theatre in English in Paris, and you immediately came up, which is, I hope you're pleased with that. Very happy to hear. Do you want to talk a little bit about this venture, how old it is, and what your goals are? Of course. Um, so Theatre in Paris, we started in the end of 2014 by one of our, there's three French co-founders, and one of them at the time had an Australian roommate, and he realized he wanted to take uh, Sam, the Australian, to a show, and there was actually nothing that France had to offer that Sam could understand. And so he decided, well, let's let's apply the concept of theatre surtitling that exists uh, within opera and in other cities, uh, notably in Berlin, and we're going to bring it to Paris. So one of the very first shows that we subtitled was a show at the Théâtre Michel, and now here we we are. We work with at least 15 theaters and have 10 different shows with partner theaters all over the cities that uh, that are subtitled. How do you find your customers? Is it just on the internet or are you marketing it strongly? Um, so our customers are definitely a mix between the tourists that come. So the tourists come here and they can buy a ticket directly on our website, theaterinparis.com. Um, and then also we work with different tour groups, ed- whether that be educational or you know, purely purely for, for fun, um, and bring different groups in as well. And then we also have different kind of more expat-oriented uh, nights for all the different expats that live here that are Anglophone or English-speaking. How do you pick the shows or the theatres? Uh, we have kind of we have a, a list of partner theaters that we subtitle all of their shows, and then otherwise we're kind of always on the radar for different shows that we think might appeal to more international audiences. Um, so that being said, we have different shows that are classics that really um, highlight the the French playwrights, whether it be Molière or Victor Hugo, and then we have more uh, modern comedies that have a lot of different uh, well-known French actors. So kind of to, to always be sharing that French aspect, but also appealing to our international clients. And I think I saw on the website there are a couple of shows that are actually delivered in English. Yes, yeah, so we have three shows, I believe. So it's mostly one-man one man shows or one-woman shows, actually. So there's How to Become Parisian in One Hour, which is <laughs> relatively well-known. And it's a female counterpart, um, which is a really new upcoming show called Oh My God, She's Parisian. It's a one-woman show. So those are our two shows in English. Um, we also have one show currently that has no dialogue at all. So it's really perfect for all and inter- all any nationality. And then the rest are mostly subtitled shows. I went to Comédie Française last night, which was a fantastic experience. And if you like a drawback for me, the not significant was that I don't speak French and there were no titles. Are you trying to get into, are you trying to take over the whole of Paris or the whole of France? I mean, we're looking to add new theatres every time there's a new show and definitely the Comédie Française is coming soon, but... <laughs> You've been in dialogue with them or...? We, we've been in touch, but uh, it's, it's a work in progress. What about you? What are your tastes in theatre? I definitely like the comedies and me being, yes, American, I love the big, grandiose musical styles. Um, so we have Grease playing, and I saw that and loved it. Um, but I also like, we also have some more kind of intimate, more original musicals that put into, in, that highlight really French culture better. There's, we have one about uh, Edith Piaf called I Love Piaf. And honestly, that's really one of my favorite shows. It's a very small, intimate, really original style musical. It's really more of a narrative of her life. So I, I, that's my favorite. And are you fluent in French anyway? So you don't need the titles or...? I do. I've been here for a few years, so I speak French quite well, but I find the subtitles are still useful when you want to kind of check up and make sure, did I understand that correctly? And yes, indeed, I did. Or, or you know, it kind of lends that, that, uh, that insight there. You talked about Greece. Is that actually performed in English or it's in French with English titles back into English? <laughs> Um, it's definitely Greece, but with a French twist. I can say that much. Um, so it's all in French, and then they took a few of the most well-known songs and they kept the the refrain in English, so as not to to lose that that aspect. Sounds a little unusual. <laughs> oh, I mean, it uh, it definitely it's a, it's a revisited uh, piece of the uh, the work. You can see that within the the decor and the backdrop and the setting. It's all it's not quite the Rydell High that we know and love. It uh, t- definitely has that Parisian twist with the French actors. How much effort does it take to put the surtitling in? Because presumably, well, I know when I was at Ranella, that's a theatre that's 120 years old, so you didn't have the surtitling in from the start. Um, Is it a massive effort? Is it uh, both technology and sort of physical aspects? 
Yeah, so definitely, I mean, for example, at the Red Night Theater, so we subtitle quite a few, almost all of their classic shows, like the one you had seen um, a few weeks and evenings ago. Um, so it's essentially, we, when we, once we partner with a the theater, we provide all of the technology and the translation and the subtitling. Um, so that being said, we install a projector and the screen that the subtitles are, are projected upon, and are up right above the stage. Um, and then on our end, we work with a translator that will translate the, the text. And then we have what's called a surtitler, it's a profession in and of itself, that will then be able to trans retranslate that text kind of into small digestible subtitles. So I mean, imagine a, a long a long speech. We need to then try break that down into you know small little small little pieces. And um, what about physically on the night? So I was there, and the timing of the titling was perfect. Is that because there's someone sitting at the back or at the front pushing buttons all the time, or is it just the you've got the timings worked out with the cast and everything comes off that way? No, exactly. Everything is in real time because, I mean, every performance uh, from one performance to another, there can be slight variations in the timing, whether an actor coughs or improvises, changes a line. Um, so we really we work with, with the cast to be able to develop um, the surtitles in and of themselves. And then there's someone, a surtitler, that is there live, ensuring to pushing every single button to ensuring that the surtitles are in real time along with, uh, along with the performance. And if someone does ad-lib, then you just get the wrong translation. Someone ad libs, we yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we have a kind of a few backups uh, always on hand, but uh, generally speaking, it'll be a, a generic kind of version, yeah. And where do you find your translators? Because certainly, all I can talk about is Cyrano, because that's the only one I've seen. But you've got some poetry in there. The English was perfect, which normally in England or probably the States, I think, where you get surtitling, the translations tend to go wrong somewhere because they're normally not done by a native speaker of the language into which it's translated. Here it did feel like it was a an English-speaking person that had written the translation and worked very hard with the poetry. Yep, no, definitely. All of our translations are done by native English speakers, and then we also have someone within our team that is a native English speaker, whether it be myself or someone else, that kind of does a last check over the text to make sure there's nothing nothing is nuanced and no uh, play of words are, are lost or anything like that. So definitely a double check by native English speakers to ensure that really it's... So how big is the Theatre in Paris team? Uh, we have about 10 based here in Paris, um, and then we also have a counterpart team in Berlin that has, they provide kind of the more, uh, the subtitling platform in and of itself. So the Pentia is our um, partner there in Berlin. So that means that there is an equivalent, it may not be called it, but theatre in Berlin, so the British title plays in Berlin as well? Uh, they can, they work, they more provide the, the software that, oh, okay, that right, handles the subtitles, exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah. That we then exploit here in Paris. Right, I think I understand all of that. What's your favorite show, well, that your company has ever done, or has done in your time? Um, in my time, I haven't seen them all. I, I joined the team in November, so, but I really think, uh, I think I mentioned it before, but the I Love Piaf has been my favorite show so far. I've seen it three times now, and each time I see it, it's, it gets better. And I take it that includes a combination of biography and singing? Oh yes, it's definitely a very musical piece. Um, so it's kind of a narration of her life. It, uh, there's a, it's written, it's both written and narrated by um, Jacques Pessis, and he narrates her life, and then it kind of interacts with uh, the different singers. So there's Caroline Rose is the current singer, and she take, takes a very much of a rock twist on the Edith Piaf song. So it's very interesting. And sings as opposed to mimes. Oh yes, definitely a singer. Uh, Amanda Matola, thank you very much. Thank you. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.